We're going to be taking a look at this example. We have a lot of parts to it, so we're going to be covering a lot of MOSFET material. We are going to consider the N MOS transfer fabricated in a 0.18 micro M process with L equal to 0.18 micrometers, that's what the M is, and W is equal to 2 micrometers. The process technology is specified to have C subscript OX, and then we can visit this in the notes link below the like button. We'll get to that in a second. And that is 8.6 F, and then we have the units, which are F over micrometer squared, and then something very similar for our micro N. And this is um, accompanied by a VTN equal to 0.5 volts. Now we're going to do part A, B, and C, but we're going to start with part A first. So part A is to find VGS and VDS that result in the MOSFET operating at the edge saturation with ID equal to 100 microamps. So to do this, we can determine the process transconductance parameter K with our apostrophe subscript N. Um, just side note, the process value is usually the minimum L we can draw. So if we look at the notes link below the like button, we have this N MOSFET device right here. And this is our L right in the middle, um, and it's the minimum L we can draw here. For the problems that we're looking at, a lot of the times the K apostrophe subscript N, which stands for NMOS, is going to be given to us. But this is how we would calculate it. We would take our micro N, and then we multiply it by the C with our OX. And the COX is going to look something like this. Um, and in doing this, we would get the value 387 micro A, microamps over V squared. And the units that we have right here, this 10 to the negative 4 and this 10 to the negative 15, that is to get it to be a micro, right? Um, oh, and so is this 10 to the 12th right here. It's again to get it to be micro. Notice how up here we have the F, which I think is like Femto or something. Um, and then we have centimeters here. We're basically wanting it to be a consistent unit. So that's all that 10 to the some power is. So now we're going to have the transistor transconductance parameter Kn. Um, to find this, we would set our Kn equal to the K apostrophe N, so what we previously found or were given, and then this is W over L. Now the equation for this and more about it is going to be on page 75 in the notes linked below the like button, and it's going to be right here. So this is for triode MOSFET uh, switches specifically looking for is the device transconductance. So transconductance is right here. Um, and what we're going to be looking at is, again, this equation. It says device transconductance right here, and that's what we're going to be using. So we're going to plug in our values. So we can see our W is 20 micrometers. Um, so we're plugging in 2. And then our L is going to be 0 0.18 micrometers. The micrometers are going to cancel out. And then we just have a 387 out front. So if we plug all this into a calculator, we do some math, we're going to get 4.3 milliamps divided by volts squared. So that is just kind of a precursor to everything we're about to do. Next, we're going to actually look at A, where we deal with the transistor operatings in saturation. With A, we're going to look at page 78 of the notes. So we're going to come down here. We have our saturation region that we're going to be looking at. So we have saturation, and yeah, that's... And this can also be found on page 79, some more information about this right here. And the actual equation for this is on page 79. So let's take a look at it. We have our NMOS in saturation. We know it's an NMOS because we were told that up here. So for our NMOS, we have ID is equal to, and we have all of this to the right. Now, we have K apostrophe N, and we know K apostrophe N times our W over L is equal to our K of N. So that is what we substituted it for right here. It's just a substitution that we made. And for our VGS minus VTN squared, well, this, the VGS minus VTN, is very, very similar to what we have on page 70. So if we scroll up here, we have our overdrive voltage. We have our VOV, and it's equal to our VGS minus the VI, but that should be like a VTN, like this, or whatever it's written. Um, this is also a substitute. So we're substituting two small things for two significantly bigger things. And that is going to make this a lot easier to solve. So now let's plug in our values. Well, we know our K of N, we found that to be 4.3 milliamps over the voltage squared, right? So 
we have our 10 times cube, that's our milli. Um, and then we have our voltage, the VOV, uh, that we need to find for. And the question for part A is asking us, um, find VGS and VDS. So we need to find those things. We don't know those things, we need to simplify it, and that's why we do the VOV. So now looking at this, we have our VOV found, right? Because we have everything else. We have our VOV that was given to us. We have our ID as 100 microamps that was given to us in our part A. It's equal to the one half and then our K of N. So doing some math, we're basically bringing everything to the other side and taking the square root of it, we're gonna get 0.22 volts. Thus, our VGS, which again, if we look at page 70, has this, VGS is equal to VTN plus our VOV. If we rearrange this, if we rearrange this, we are going to get the equation that we have right here. VGS is equal to our VTN plus our VOV. So we have the threshold voltage plus the overdrive voltage. Now our threshold voltage, the 0.5, is given to us up here in the actual problem, 0.5 volts. We just found the overdrive voltage to be 0.22 volts, and so we're gonna get the 0.72 volts for our VGS. And since operation is at the end of saturation, our VDS is going to be equal to our V not V. And if we look at page 79, we're going to come up with a little bit of information. Uh, notice that we have our VGS equal to VT plus V not V, again, restated over here. Um, since we're at the end of saturation, which is right here, it gets pinched off. Our VDS, just like it says right here, is equal to our V not V. So our VDS is equal to the overdrive voltage. So our VDS is going to be 0.22 volts, the same as our overdrive voltage, again, because they're equal to each other. So that answers A, find VGS and VDS. Our VGS is going to be 0.72 and our VDS is 0.22 volts. Now let's move on to part B. And part B says, if VGS is kept constant, find VDS that results in ID is equal to 50 microamps. So we come down here with our VGS kept constant at 0.2 volts and ID reduced from the value obtained at the edge saturation, the MOSFET will now be operating in the triode region. And what that is saying is that, well, we can see that the current goes down from the previous value. The previous value in A was 100 microamps, right? And now we're gonna go to 50 microamps for part B. So we go from 100 to 50. And since it's going down, that means we are going to be in the triode region. Um, if it was going up, we'd be saturation. So now we can use the triode equation. This is in page 80, so we'll just scroll here. I um, mean, the triode equation is going to be the following right here. The PMOS and triode, but for NMOS, it's going to be the same thing. We would just replace the P's with N's. So if we look at this, we're going to set our ID equal to, we have our K of N, which we found previously, 4.3 times 10 cubed. Um, and then inside of here, we have our V not V. We're just substituting the VGS with our VTP or VTN in this case. And that's going to be our V, uh, not V, right? What we have uh, here, this is that equation. And so we're gonna get a, a 0 0.22. We multiply this by our VDS, which we don't know yet because that is gonna change. And then we subtract this by the one half over, with times, not over, times our VDS squared. And we can't use the previous values uh, because we're at a, a different region. So now we have the same unknown variable, but we're gonna to have to use the quadratic equation to solve for this. We can plug this into a calculator once it's in the following form right here. Now the quadratic equation is gonna give us two solutions. VDS is equal to 0 0.06 volts and VDS is equal to 0 0.39 volts. So which one is the correct one? Well, to be in triode, we need the VDS to be smaller than our V naught V. So, if we look at page 76, that will actually tell us information about that. We can see that our VDS has to be larger than the VDS minus our saturation. 
and that is just for our MOSFET and triode. And we're going to use the same value here as our V and not V. Um, it's just going to be different for our VDS. That's what we. That's why we can't reuse it. But we're reusing the VGS and the V not V. Um, so 0.22 is less than 0.39. So that is not going to be in the right answers. It's greater than 0.060. So that is going to be the answer right here. The second answer is greater than or V not V, and thus it's physically meaningless since we know the transistor is operating in the triode region. So it has to be less than. And that is it for our part B. In part C, we're told to investigate the use of the MOSFET as a linear amplifier. Let it be operating in saturation with VDS equal to 0.3 volts. Find the change in our ID resulting from the VGS changing from 0.7 volts by plus minus 0.01 volts. So for this one, we'll come down to our C and we have a lot that we need to do, but not too much that's different from what we need to do initially. So for VG VGS, it's equal to 0.7 volts. Uh, we were told this up here, changing by 0.7 volts. So coming down here, VOV is equal to 0.2 volts. Since VDS is equal to 0.3 volts, the transistor is operating in saturation. So let's go for not triode, but saturation. If we scroll back down here, we have our saturation equation. ID is equal to, we're going to use K of N, not K apostrophe N. So we have one half times our K of N times our VOV, if we substitute it like we've done previously, squared. And so let's plug in our values. We have this 4300, and that's our 43 time, or 4.3 times 10 cubed. That's for the milli times our 0 0.04, because that is VOV squared. And that's going to give us 86 microamps. Now is where we want to solve for the plus minus of the voltage for the changing of our 0 0.7 volts. So scrolling back down here, we know plus minus 1, right, is going to give us a VGS of, if we go off 0 0.7, 0 0.71 volts. And for the lower one, 0 0.69 volts. And for our VOV, if we change this, it's going to be 0 0.21 volts and 0 0.19 volts. And all we're going to do is plug in, we're going to use the same equation previously, right? So we're just going to plug in the VOV. And that's going to give us these two values. Now, the delta of this is going to be the change. So the plus minus voltage is going to be 8.8 .8 microamps. So what we can get from this is that if we go up one voltage, remember this affects our VGS and our V and not V, if we go up by one volt, we're going to get a output of 94.8 microamps for ID. Similarly, if we go down oh, uh, 0 0.01 volt, I think I said 0, or I think I said 1 volt, it should be 0 0.01 volts, we are going to get 77.6 microamps. And if we compare these to our normal right here, we are going to get a difference of 8.8 .8 microamps for plus 0 0.01 and a negative 8.4 microamps for a minus 0 0.01. We can conclude that the two changes are almost equal, an indication of almost a linear operation when the changes in VGS are kept small. It's just a preview of small signal operations of the MOSFETs studied in our sections 5.4 and 5.5. We have these notes linked below the like button and we're going to go over more problems too. Um, but this is it for this one. It contained a lot of useful information that is great to go over.